G'day, ladies and germs. Welcome back to McGrath Matics for another Extension 1 math lesson. Hope you're having a great school holidays. Although if you're watching math videos on YouTube, it's probably not too great, but um, could be worse. You could be making math videos on school holidays. So, you know, treasure what you've got. Uh, hopefully you watched my last video, which was inequalities part one. So you can pause the video and have a go at these two warm up questions. Or if you didn't watch part one, you can give yourself an uppercut. All right, let's pause and have a think about how to solve this quadratic inequality and then how to solve this absolute value inequality. Okay, here we go. So for a quadratic inequality, we want to move everything over to one side. So we have 2x squared minus x minus 6 less than 0. Now, we're going to solve this quadratic equation to figure out where our two intercepts are and then think about whether we're going to be above or below the x-axis. So we're going to set it equal to 0. We are going to solve this. You can either use the quadratic formula. If you are disgusting, you can use the cross method. Um, if you want to factorize, I'm not going to go through the steps, but I have um, videos on my channel that show you how to factorize this if you want to learn. But here's the factorized form. And then we get our solutions. For this first bracket, we're going to get x equal to 2. And for here, we're going to get negative 3 over 2 as our two solutions. Now, if we think about this quadratic that we started off with here, it's got a positive two in front of the x squared, so it's concave up, which means it looks like this. So we're saying, where is this quadratic um, less than zero? Is asking us, where is it below the x-axis, which is between the two values of minus one and a half and positive two. So there is our solution, la di da Over here, we have the absolute value of something is less than or equal to five. That means that something could be anywhere between zero and five or zero and minus five. So we set what's inside our absolute value to be between negative five and positive five, and now we just solve. So we're going to take away three from everywhere. So we get minus eight and we get positive two here. Now we'll get the X by itself by multiplying everything by minus two. That's gonna turn that into a 16. It's gonna turn that into a minus four. And because we are multiplying by a negative with an inequality, we have to reverse the sign uh, direction. So we get 16 greater than X greater than minus four. We're just going to flip that around so it's pointing the right way, and there is our solution. X between minus 4 and positive 16, including both ends. Okay, cool beans. Hopefully you got both of those correct, and now you're ready for part 2. So this next part is going to focus entirely on inequalities where there are unknown values in the denominator of a fraction, because they are pretty common HSC questions in this course, um, speaking historically. So hopefully that will continue, because these are fun. Here's our first example. We've got three divided by x minus two is less than one. So if this was an equation, it'd be a piece of piss. You just multiply the x minus two across and then continue to solve. The issue here is that we can't really multiply by x minus two across the right hand side because we don't know whether x minus two is positive or negative. So we don't know whether that sign is meant to turn around or not. So we have to sort of play around this and do a bit of glorified intelligent trial and error to figure out where our solution is. What we're essentially going to do here is we're going to figure out where what's called the critical values of this function are. It's kind of similar to where the x-intercepts are. And then we're going to test some values to figure out whether we are working around those points. You'll see what I mean. We're going to start off by saying that um, x can definitely not be equal to 2 because if the bottom is equal to 0, 3 divided by 0 is not something that I can do with my brain, so you can't either. So x minus 2 can't be 0 because you can't divide by 0. That means x cannot be equal to 2. That is our first critical value. That we are going to test around okay so you always get your first critical value by setting the denominator equal to not zero and then figuring out what you cannot be now to find our other critical values like i said we're essentially going to find um, the intercepts of this function so to do that we're going to set the less than sign to be an equal sign and we're just going to solve this equation to figure out where our other important points are so solving this we're going to multiply the x minus 2 across the right to get 3 equal to x minus 2 Add 2 to both sides, and we get x equals 5 as our other critical value. Okay, so we know our solution is going to be revolving around 2 and 5. We just don't know whether it's going to be between 2 and 5 or outside or a combination of both. So the way I figure this out, um, this is my preferred method, is you drop a little number line. We're going to put a dot on 2 and a dot on 5 because they are our critical values. And now we're going to figure out whether this inequality works in these three regions, either less than 2, between 2 and 5, and greater than 5. So the way we figure that out is we just pick a value, we chuck it into the inequality, and we see whether we get a true result or a false result. If it's true, then we're going to be having our solution here. If it's false, then we're not here. So to do that, we're going to start off with, we're going to test to the left of 2. So we're just going to, you could pick 0 if you want, that'd work fine. I'm just going to test x equal to 1. 
I'm gonna sub x equal one into the inequality. So we get three over one minus two less than one. So three over one minus two is gonna be three divided by minus one, which is gonna be minus three. Minus three is less than one. So this result is true. This is a true statement. That tells me my solution is going to exist to the left of two. Any number less than two is going to work in this inequality. So we get our first bit, we're gonna put a tick here. Between two and five, we're gonna just gonna test three. Again, you could do four, could do 4.5. It doesn't matter. As long as you're within the region, you're gonna get the same result. So putting three into our inequality, we have three over three minus two. That's three divided by one, which is three. Three less than one is not true. That's a false statement. That tells us that values between two and five do not make sense in this inequality. So our solution is not between these two values. Now we'll just test to the right. So bigger than five, we're just gonna chuck in six into the inequality, three divided by six minus two. So we have three over four. So we have three quarters. Three quarters is less than one. This is a true statement. So our solution is here as well, okay? Now importantly, this number line is not your answer. This number line is you're working out. Now you've got to write your answer and say, therefore X is less than two and X is greater than five. There's our final answer. Ta-da. Okay, so there are other ways of solving inequalities like this, um, but I find this way the most straightforward with the less room for error. So this is the one that I encourage my students to use. And if this seems logical to you, then go for it. So yeah, find your critical values, test some points, and then figure out where your solution is. Works every time. Let's do another one with a bit more spice to it. <clears throat> Work example number two, we've got x times x plus three over x plus one greater than or equal to two. Okay, we're starting off the exact same as the last example. We're starting off by getting our first critical value by saying we cannot divide by zero. So x plus one cannot be equal to zero. That tells us x equal to minus one is not going to be part of our solution because it doesn't give us any rational value. So it doesn't work. Critical value number one achieved. Now to get the other critical values, just like before, we're gonna set the inequality into an equation and we're going to solve it to find the intercepts of the function and then play around with it. So solving this, we're going to multiply the x plus one across the right-hand side to join the two. We'll now expand both sides. So we get x squared, three x on the left, on the right, we get two x and two. Putting everything over to the left-hand side to form a quadratic equation, we have x squared, subtracting two x from both sides and subtracting two from both sides gives us this quadratic. Okay, thankfully this one can be um, factorized quite easily. We're adding to one and multiplying to minus two. So our numbers are plus two and minus one. This equation gives us our two solutions of x equal to minus two here and x equal to positive one here. And those are our other two critical values. Okay, so easier questions like the previous example will have two critical values. This one has three, minus one, one and minus two. So just like before, we're going to draw up a quick little number line. We're gonna put on our values, bit of a trick this time. Notice how this dot is hollow and these ones are filled in. That's because the original problem was not a greater than two, it was a greater than or equal to two. So these two critical values that we obtained by setting the inequality equal to the right-hand side and solving, these values are going to be included in our solution because they're gonna give us an equal to two, um, which is part of the, part of the question. The critical value that we got by setting the denominator equal to zero, that is never gonna be part of our solution because we can never divide by zero. Okay, so keep in mind for questions with a greater than or equal to or a less than or equal to, the ones that you get over here are gonna be included as hollow dots and this one is never gonna be included. Okay, a bit of work to do now. We've got one, two, three, four regions to test to see whether our inequality is happening there. So let's start with over on the left, we're gonna test x equals negative three and sub it into our inequality. When we sub it in, conveniently, minus three plus three is zero, so the whole thing just works out to be zero, and zero greater than or equal to two is a false statement. Zero is not bigger than two. So over here, we are not existing. To the left of minus two is not a part of our solution. Now between minus two and minus one, let's just try, go halfway and go in minus 1.5, sub it into the inequality, punch it into the Casio calculator, and it gives you a value of 4.5. 4.5 is bigger than two. This is a true statement, which means we are existing in our solution space right here. So between minus two and minus one is a part of our solution set, as we say. Okay, next region between minus one and one, let's just test x equal to zero. Sub it in and conveniently works out to give us just a nice easy zero. Zero greater than two is a false statement, which means between these two values, 
is not going to be included in our solution. And the last bit is greater than one. So why don't we just go with x equal to two. Let's chuck it in. Cassio gives us a value of 10 divided by three. So about three and a third. Three and a third is bigger than two. This is true, which means the right of one is going to be included in our solution. Okay. So this is all part of our working, but now we scrap that and we say, all right, looking at this, <clears throat> we can see our solution is we are between minus two and minus one. We're including minus two, but we're excluding minus one. And then we are greater than or equal to positive one. So here is how we write that. X between minus two and minus one, including the minus two, as well as X greater than or equal to one. And that's our solution. Wasn't that fun? It was fun. Yeah, you're right. Okay, let's finish off with one more looking at a spicier um, HSC level question from 2016. So it's a band four level question, but the process is the exact same as what we just did. Okay, so if you made sense of the last two examples, by all means hit pause and see if you can get three out of three on this one, which is about 4% of the exam. So that's pretty good value. Um, if you're too scared, you can just work through it with me and I will be your guide. <clears throat> okay, starting off the exact same as the last two, we are dividing by something with an x in it, which means, hang on, we can't divide by zero. So 2x plus 5 cannot be equal to zero, which means 2x cannot be minus 5, which means x cannot be equal to minus 2.5, just dividing both sides by 2. Okay, first critical value achieved. Now we get the others by changing this greater than sign into an equal sign, and we solve this equation. Okay, so let's put the x across to the right. Let's multiply 2x plus 5 across to the right. Now let's do a bit of expanding and simplifying so we get 3 equal to 2x squared plus 5x. We've got a quadratic, so let's put everything on one side. Let's bring the 3 across to the right to become a minus 3. So we have 2x squared, 5x minus 3 equal to 0. Okay, quadratic to solve. Again, whatever method you want, quadratic formula, cross method, go for your life. Uh, I'm going to factorize it. Um, again, if you need to know how, I have a video on it, which is... Um, it's probably fine. Factorizing this, we end up with x plus 3 and 2x minus 1 as our um, factors, which means our solutions are x equal to minus 3 and x equal to positive a half in this bracket. So those are our other two critical values. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a tiny bit sick, but I'm, I'm pairing through because I love math and I love you guys. Let's write these numbers up here. Let's put up a number line and let's put on some dots. So we've got minus 2.5 here, we've got minus three here, and we've got positive a half here. So again, we've got a bit of work to do. We've got one, two, three, four regions to test once again. Let's start off over on the left and let's try x equal to minus four to see if less than minus three is gonna work in this statement. So we take our statement, we replace the x's with minus fours. Um, that should be a minus four. I don't know if that matters. I'm guessing it probably doesn't, but anyway, sorry, that should be a four. Uh, either way, you probably don't get two. You probably get something else, but either way, you end up with something that's bigger than zero, which is false. Um, sorry, that's true. Two is bigger than zero. That is true. I need to get more sleep. That's a true statement, which means that our solution to the left of minus three is all Gucci. Let's try between minus 2.5 and minus three. So why don't we just go with minus um, 2.75? Let's see if I did it correctly this time. Hey, I did, that's good, <laughs> that's a relief. Uh, okay, putting uh, minus 2.75 into the left-hand side of the expression gets us a value of minus 3.25. A negative value is definitely not bigger than zero, so this gets us a false statement from the original problem, which means that between these two values, we are going to exclude from our solution. Okay, up next, we'll go between minus 2.5 and uh, a half. So um, you can test any number here, but zero is usually a good one to, ch to chuck in because it gives you an easy calculation. Subbing zero into the inequality gets us a value of 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is bigger than zero. That is true, which means between these two values, we are going to include in our solution. Uh, one last bit to check. We just want to check greater than a half. So why don't we just go with x equal to one? That's going to be nice and easy. Subbing one into the inequality gets us a value around negative 0.6. It was a long decimal. I didn't want to write it out. I think it's negative two thirds from memory. Probably not actually, that'd be 0.7. Anyway, it's a decimal, it's negative. Negative decimals are not bigger than zero, which means that this is a false statement. The right of a half is not going to be included in our solution. So we're gonna put a cross. We scrap all this now and we say, cool. Our solution is we are less than negative three and we are between minus 2.5 and positive one half. So we're excluding this, excluding this, we're here and we're here. 
All right, beautiful. If you got the same uh, expressions here, congratulations on your three marks out of 70 in the 2016 HSC exam. All right, cool. That's it for inequalities um, and for me today. Uh, tune in next week for hopefully a lesson on starting polynomials, looking at some long division. So, okay, cool. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you got some value out of that and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.